Welcome to Forest Street webinar. Today is 30 of June 2015. My name is Nenad and today we will see a fundamental analysis and news analysis concept. This uh, first part of the webinar will be reserved for uh, some uh, basic knowledge about fundamental facts and uh, news uh, analysis and uh, this has a lot to do with uh, micro and microeconomic policy. So before we begin, as always, our standard is disclaimer. Online educational materials are available by Admiral Market says it's only for a global audience. Therefore, please take into consideration that the information in this session may not be suitable for everyone. To get a corresponding information on charting conditions and any other detail, Please visit www.admiralmarketsglobal.com, select your country of residence and contact an appropriate entity. Risk disclosure statement stating all possible risks associated with forex market by accepting the risk. You are also proceeding further with me. Admiral Markets UK LTD takes no responsibility for the information accuracy. The analysis represents the personal opinion of the author, it's me and in no way it represents the actual suggestion for a trade. These are not in case opinions, the website in the video is not a .co.uk website but globalnews.com website. For us, it's risky business and this is a personal opinion only, this webinar is for informational educational purposes only. So, we have said that I will give you a quick introduction to a um, couple of things which I use. So, and this is very, very important for also for our subject today. So, other markets offer a method trader for Supreme Edition, so it's a uh, set of add-ons to standard MT4 platform and it's very, very, very useful when you day trade. I particularly day trade uh, during the week so I don't do any uh, intra-month trades, so only intra-day and intra-week trades and this is a great addition to standard MT4 platform, be sure to check it. Also, for all of you who still don't know what I do, I'm a full-time trader, I work closely with Agile Markets and we are in cooperation with Forex3. I publish uh, intraday analysis, exclusive analysis for both uh, Agile Markets and Forex3. You can check my profile here on Forex3 also. And uh, this is uh, the tool which, uh, which I really prefer to use during the day. So, correlation matrix, I will talk about correlation, some important things I will mention today, okay? Correlation matrix, which is very important if you trade multiple pairs, and correlation is always important to see how the markets are interconnected, and uh, you have our manager to see impending news and other stuff. So, this is one of one of many features of other markets for Supreme Edition, so be sure to check it. Uh, today, we will talk about fundamental analysis. So what is fundamental analysis? I will give you my definition of fundamental analysis, which is pretty much straightforward. Uh, then we will talk about subject of analysis, main players in forex market, important factors, and key releases which could be found uh, in any economic calendar, okay? Key releases. So, what is basically a fundamental analysis? The thing is that fundamental analysis is the analysis of the overall state of the economy, interest rates, production, earnings, and management, okay? The thing is that fundamental analysis tends to have a broader impact on the market than technical analysis. But if you use technical analysis, which is aligned to fundamental analysis, then usually during day trading you will have best setups. One of the latest fundamental alignments with technical analysis uh, was published on Friday, that is uh, this Friday when I published uh, Euro dollar analysis and if you remember, if you read it, uh, I was uh, basically looking for short trades. And over the weekend, when fundamental facts aligned with technical facts, we saw a 200 pip drop on euro dollar, three, 400 pip drop on euro yen. So that happens when fundamental facts or fundamental analysis is aligned 
with technical analysis, okay? We say that it is in equilibrium when fundamental analysis goes along with technical analysis, okay? That is the time when fundamentals perfectly follow the technical analysis. And that is the time, guys, when we usually make very, very good profits, okay? Now, the analysis of prices using important fund factors, fundamental factors as. So, we use the analysis of prices using these factors, which are political factors, interest rates, and social economic factors, okay? So, those are basically most important fundamental factors. Now, we are talking about uh, broader uh, ma 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 uh, macroeconomical aspects. We need to divide these things into smaller parts to fully understand what we deem by all important fundamental factors. And we will use later slides to see that, okay? Why do we need this kind of analysis? Basically, especially if we do a day trading, it will help us to identify conditions for breaking the existing trend. Then it will help us to understand the cause of what is happening in the market. Because, guys, when I, when I do the analysis, I don't do just pure, pure technical analysis. I always try to understand what is happening behind the price and what can be the main driver for the move. That is why I usually publish one or two analyses during the day and I scan through all of those nice 25 pairs which I usually scan during the day and I align, I try to align important fundamental factors with important technical analysis. And that is when we need to, when we are fully, fully fledged Forex analysts. So we need to understand not just technical factors, but we also need to understand those fundamental reasoning behind all the moves in Forex market. That is why most of the traders basically are struggling to make profits because they want to just follow the signals from, from their systems. No, we need to understand. We don't need to be experts in uh, economics to understand those factors. Most of these things which I'm talking about with you now, basically I have learned that on my university, but you know, you, this is more, now this is the, the core of that. You don't need to read 20 books to understand what is fundamental analysis and what is happening with the market. You just need to understand these fundamental factors, basics of these fundamental factors, to do a proper fundamental reason. Okay? Now, fundamental analysis mostly apply, applies to widely used long-term forecasting. I particularly, if you've been following me, you probably know that I, I don't do any long-term forecasting. Uh, if you read the analysis, if you read Forex polls, predictions, which I publish every day and every week, also with Forex Street and Admiral Markets, you, you, you know that I never use long-term forecasting. I just, I'm not a prophet, so I cannot, I, I just cannot say what will happen in the future, nor I can do some forecasting because I tend to be very precise. And the most important thing where fundamental analysis helps me is basically, as I said, aligning fundamental factors with technical charts, okay? Now, the subject of analysis are various. First, we have the policy of central banks, okay? Such as European Central Bank, Fed, BOE, BOJ, RBA, POC. So those are all central banks. USA, Fed, Bank of England, BOE, BOJ is Bank of Japan, RBA is Reserve Bank of Australia, BOC is Bank of Canada, and so on, okay? So the policy of central banks basically is the most important factor in fundamental analysis. 
But we also have very, very important factors such as macroeconomic data, which is economic calendar we need to read, we need to follow it every single day. Then intermarket analysis, interconnection of markets and correlation, and others such as carry trade, sovereign crisis, and bond markets. Okay? Now, the policy of central banks is basically to supply operational capital to the country's commercial banks. Okay, now follow me because I will, I will speak slowly and this webinar is being recorded and it should be uploaded so I will speak slowly. So the policy of the central banks is to supply operational capital to the country's commercial banks. So the, the central banks are supplying capital to the commercial banks. Okay. They need to promote the stability of the country's financial system. Also, banks, central banks, should manage the production and distribution of the nation's currency. Central banks are independent, and because they are independent, they can create and they are creating monetary policy. Their role is to inform the public of the overall state of the economy by publishing various economic statistics. Okay? So, central banks, as we said, supply commercial banks with operational cap capital, thus creating a structure for, for one nation's economy. That ensures the banking system has sufficient liquidity for various business and individual consumers to borrow money and the avail availability of credit. That availability of credit has a very direct impact on business and consumer spending, which is very important for one nation's economy. Now, central banks, every central bank, charges interest on the short-term loans it provides. The rate charged by the central bank affects the interest rate that the banks charge their customers as the banks must recover their costs plus earn a profit. Okay? Now, central banks use the relation between the short-term rates at which they offer loans and interest rates the banks charge as a way to influence the cost for public to borrow money. Okay? So that is the primary role of central banks. So central banks create monetary policy which translates to one nation's economy, which translates to currency, to national currency movement. Everything is correlated and everything is connected. Now, the main players in forex market, as we said, are central banks, then countries through borrowing and bond issues, companies, then foreign exchange fixing. I will use a separate slide to explain because a lot of uh, traders asked me and have been asking me what is a foreign exchange fixing. I will explain that. Then speculators. So you probably know that all of us who trade, who trade as retail traders, are speculators, okay? Then investment ma management firms, non-bank foreign exchange companies, okay, such as, for example, Western Union, and my, yeah, there is money transfer remittance companies, so-called bureau de change, okay? So those are the main players. Every single transaction creates an effect on forex market, at least by a small impact, okay? Now, what is a foreign exchange fix? That is very, very important, guys, for all of you who day trade, okay? Now, the London fix, it's called London fix, is predefined time of day when orders from both sides of the market are aggregated together where banks guarantee investors a certain rate for their currency trades. It's also called WM Reuters benchmark 
rates, okay? WM Reuters benchmark rates, okay? Reuters publish the benchmark price usually after monitoring the transactions that occur around 16, sorry, yeah, 16 GMT and 11 GMT, okay? And they set the rate at their discretion. One more thing which is important to add is that there is two London fixed times. Guys, just follow the price at 11 GMT okay, and 16 GMT. You will notice some changes in the price at this period, okay? Now, the importance of this fix, a London fix or Reuters benchmark rates lies in the fact that they are used to value trillions of dollars in investment held by pension funds and money managers. And that includes more than 3.6 trillion of index funds. All of the orders are placed in advance, okay? So the trader for the, from the bank knows already how much he has to buy, sell, and from here comes his edge because he can front run those orders ahead. That is important why we, you, we when we day trade, we need to have a proper stop loss placement. And that is why, as I always say, it's important to trade the first three hours of each major session. The first three hours of London session, the first three hours of US session, the first three hours of Asian session. That is most profitable time. Of course, London, New York overlap is the most profitable time. One of the reasons is that so-called foreign exchange fix, okay? So basically, you don't have to have the information of those order flows, okay? Because we, we are not banks, we don't trade, we are not bank traders. We just need to monitor the action around London fix. And sometimes and very often, we can find a good pattern to trade, okay? So that is foreign exchange fix. Okay, now we also uh, we also basically talked uh, what, who are the main players in forex market. Now we need to know what determines exchange rate. Okay, what is what are the major determinants, and what is the what are those things which tells us that euro dollar, for example, is 1.1200 now. So, economic policy is the first important thing, okay? The economic policy is actions that governments take in the microeconomic field, okay? So, it's subject to every government. So, it covers the systems for setting levels of taxation, government budgets, money supply, and interest rates, but also labor market, national ownership, and many other areas of government interventions in the economy, okay? That is economic policy. Government budget deficits or surpluses, basically, it's, it's important because government budget is a government document presenting the government's proposed revenues spending for financial year okay when we say when we say uh, government deficit we use national debt that is now the case with greece okay federal government deficit is equal to national debt so it's the same thing and the greece is currently undergoing a federal government deficit now, the opposite of a budget deficit is a budget surplus, surplus. And that means when inflows equal outflows, we said the budget, budget is balanced, okay? So we have budget deficit, budget surplus, and equilibrium. Equilibrium when is when inflows equal outflows, okay? 
Other important factor is balance of trade levels and trends, so-called supply and demand of currency. So just like any commodity, the value of a free-flowing currency is based on supply and demand. Okay? Now, to increase a currency value, central bank can buy currency and hold it in its reserves. Okay? That will reduce the supply of the currency available and could lead to an increase in valuation. Okay? To decrease currency value, the central bank can sell its reserves back to the market. Okay? To decrease currency value. And usually that, that was happening with yen. Okay? Because too strong currency is not good for exporters. Okay? Because importers need to pay more for exporter goods. Okay? Then, to decrease the currency, central bank will sell its reserves back to the market. Selling, you know what selling is. Basically, you're devaluating your currency, and that will increase the supply of the currency and could lead to a decrease in valuation. Okay? So that is supply and demand. Okay? Then we have inflation levels and trends. You know what basic definition of inflation is. Inflation is the increase in prices of services and goods over time. Okay? So the rate at which the general level of prices for goods and services is rising will make purchasing power falling. So if the inflation rate is 3%, then a $10 good or service will cost $13 a year. Then we have economic growth and the, basically the main the main measurement of the economic growth is GDP, gross domestic product. GDP is an economic model that reflects the value of a country's output. Country's GDP is the total monetary value of the goods and or services which is produced by the country over a specific period of time. So GDP. Now guys, this is this is important, guys, okay? This is important. Okay, this is a typo, yes, yeah, so it's basically 10, 0, 3, but no problem. Boyk is saying 30, yeah, this is a typo, so actually it's 10, 0, 3, but you understand the point, okay? You understand the point, okay? The thing is that these factors, guys, all of this which I have been talking now, is reflected on economic calendar. And we will get back to economic calendar. So you need to be patient and you need to understand all of these concepts. Because at the second part of the webinar, I will be presenting you the system for economic trading, SPY trading, and NFP trading. Okay? But let's concentrate now on this economic facts. Okay? Okay, this is a typo and we can correct it basically. Okay. Now, the important thing to, to say also, I forgot about it, is basically market psychology. The overall sentiment or feeling what market is experience, experiencing at any given time. That is greed, that is fear, that is various expectations. And all of those factors will contribute to the herd, okay? And that will translate to investing mentality or so-called sentiment, guys. So-called sentiment. Now, the essence, guys, of monetary policy, okay? The essence of monetary policy is this. You can memorize, snapshot this slide. Because this is important, okay? When there is a recession in the economy, central bank will decrease the interest rates, okay? I know that many of you just read through all of these uh, statements, 
about interest rates, but you don't understand what they are used for, okay? So, when there is a recession in the economy, when the things are not, are not going fine with the economy, okay, is basically is when central banks are decreasing the interest rates. And in the meantime, they are pumping the economy with money in order to, stimul to stimulate business activity and prevent the development of deflation process, okay? Now, in contrary, okay, when the economy is on the rise, there is an overheating risk of, or the risk of serious inflation growth, okay? And central bank starts to increase interest rates because their, their, uh, their uh, job is to halt the business activity and the rise in inflation, okay? So that is very important. Now, we have decrease and increase of interest rate, okay? Now, this is the essence, guys, of monetary policy, okay? Now, we are talking about decreasing and increasing of interest rates. Decreasing of interest rates is so-called monetary easing, okay? Monetary easing, okay? That will make loans cheaper, such as mortgage, consumer loan, and as a result, it stimulates consumptions and business activity in the economy, decreasing interest rate. That will result in fall of interest rates on deposit and bonds, which is also a good thing for a consumer. It will spark growth on the domestic stock market. Okay? It will result in increased inflation in the economy but it may result in bubble formation, okay? The thing is, the sum is that negative effect is called, it's, it's dovish effect, okay? When we see decrease of interest rate, we usually say that the governor of central bank had a dovish statement and that always has the negative effect on domestic currency. So, decrease, for example, of interest rate in, for example, in pound will basically weaken the pound versus safe heaven such as dollar and reserve currency such as yen, okay? That is why we do basket trade, okay? For example, for example if we see a decrease of interest rate in pound, we can sell pound, dollar, pound, yen, all pound basket immediately, okay? Immediately. Uh, now, increase of interest rate is basically when, uh, when, 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 uh, when the market expects a positive effect on a domestic currency, okay? So, it results in a higher cost for loans, okay? And that will limit business activity in the economy. It will also result in a rise of interest rates on deposits and bonds. It will put a pressure on the domestic stock market, but it will result in decreased inflation in the economy. And when a governor makes a, a, a statement, where, it stay, where he or she states that there will be an increase of interest rate, we call it a hawkish statement, okay? And it will have a positive effect on the domestic currency, okay? It will have a positive effect, okay? Okay, now we need basically to uh, tell some things about hints and rumors, okay? hints and rumors. That is also, guys, which is very important, again, especially if you day trade. Any hints, rumors, announcements of the leaders, chairman, important macroeconomic data on a possible tightening of the monetary policy may have supportive effect on the currency. Any hints or signals about finishing the cycle of rate increase may have a negative effect on the domestic currency. But the rule of the thumb usually is buy rumor, sell facts. 
buy the rumor, sell the fact. And this is one of the examples, buy the rumor, sell the fact. Rumor that Greece deal will be announced. 1st of June, and look at the reaction. Look, guys, at this reaction. Now, fact, Greek government quits negotiations. Okay? Bang. Look at the drop. But yet again, another day, rumor that the deal still can be achieved. Just watch these movements. That is why it's very important to have a stop loss. Okay? So hints and rumors will move the market. And usually that movement will happen in a currency pair which is the core of that hint and or the rumor. Those currency, uh, that, that currency pair is Euro now. Of all of these economical and political factors we have been talking about, Euro dollar now has the most impact by buying the rumors and selling the facts. So look at this. Rumor that this deal will be announced, it spiked the currency up. A huge spike, over 400 pips. Then there were different rumors during all of these periods, basically making a whipsaw on euro dollar for our time frame. Whipsaw is sharp tooth pattern, okay? caused by fundamental facts, by all of this uncertain by all of this uncertainty in the forex market. And it's very dangerous if it happens on a higher time frame. Okay? It's not dangerous if we see it on one minute or 15 minutes. Or sorry, five minutes. But it's dangerous on four hour time frame. Okay? And you can see that this is a whipsaw on four hour euro dollar. Rumor, buy the rumor, fact, sell the fact, buy the rumor. That is why rumors and facts are also important. Okay. Now we also need to talk about the the strongest currency in the world. Maybe you don't agree that dollar should be the strongest currency. But the, the, the real effect is that we, I don't tell why now dollar is the strongest and most traded currency or, let's say, safe heaven. But that is the fact. Okay? So U.S. quantitative easing also has the effect on every single currency. Okay? So purchase of the securities on the central bank balance sheet okay, is QE. By buying or selling financial securities, the central bank may increase or decrease the supply of money in the system. Okay? It's quantitative easing. Printing money is other name from for quantitative easing. Okay? Central banks, now, it's, it's important for you to know that central banks should buy government debts from secondary markets, okay? And they're prohibited from buying government debt directly from the government, okay? So the two-step process when, where the government sells bonds to private entities that in turn sell them to the central bank has been called monetizing the debt, okay? Monetizing the debt. Because central bank creates money to stimulate the economy, not to finance government spending, okay? Printing press is a term which Ben Bernanke, a former governor of Fed, basically he used the term in the year of 2002, Okay, he used the term printing press. So 
that if rates reached zero and deflation threatened, the government could always act to ensure deflation was prevented. Okay? The effect on USA, basically at the beginning of the crisis in 2008, U.S. Federal Reserve System implemented the first program of quantitative easing in the amount of $1.7 trillion. QE2, which happened from November 10 to June 11, 2010 and 2011, basically implemented the second program of quantitative easing in the amount of $0.6 trillion. Traditional quantitative easing is is expected to revive the economy and the banking lending while causing a decrease in the domestic currency and an increase in demand for stocks and commodities. So that is why U.S. quantitative easing has the overall impact on the forex market. Now uh, we need to talk about macroeconomic data, okay? And uh, that is very important because we are seeing that on economic calendar, okay, which is the crucial for day trading, okay. Good data brings the beginning or a continuation of an interest rate increase cycle. That is always the primary factor. Consumer spending, uh, CPI, those figures will always basically bring an end or beginning or a continuation of an interest rate increase cycle. That is why we should always monitor CPI and other factors which can be very, very crucial for interest rate decrease or increase, okay? So, in the case that the central bank makes it clear that it's prone to tighten monetary policy, it will raise the risk appetite and it will be positive for Standard & Poor, WTI and other indices or group of stocks. Now, is it better or worse than forecast? When we use economic calendar, okay, this is now important for the second part of the, the webinar, we use the deviation. I will also show you on slide. The bigger the deviation from forecast is, the bigger the spike is. And we, when we trade the news, we basically trade the spike, okay? We also need to understand what is the prevailing trend in the market, okay? What is the prevailing trend in the market? Because markets may correct itself, market may correct itself after the spike in the direction of a trend. That translates to spike movement. For example, GBP dollar is in uptrend. Then there is news which is basically saying that, uh, for example, uh, for example, uh, the GDP is a little bit deviated for the worse from deviation from the forecast, that can translate to inter, uh, interim, immediate sell-off of GDP, of GBP dollar. And that will, that will correct after some time, okay? Because that then usually the price is following the trend. It can fall one day, two days, or a couple of hours, and usually then the trend is respected. So markets may correct after the spike in the direction of a trend, but then they will definitely follow the trend again, okay? So these are now the most important factors on economic calendar, guys. You can find economic calendar on annual markets website, Forex Factory, Forex Street, all of important, uh, all of uh, big brokers and big websites for Forex uh, trading have a calendar, okay? GDP, negative GDP growth, two quarters in a row marks the beginning of a recession. We have three figures, GDP, preliminary, revised, final. So focus on this. Focus is on personal spending, personal consumer expenditures. And it can be outdated data, okay? ISM manufacturing, 
ISM Services, Chicago, PMI, Field Fed Index, New York Empire State Index. Okay. It's called business activity indices. And they can be also found on economic calendar. Okay. Psychological level is 50 points. Deviation is above or below. Labor market, non-farm payrolls, non-farm private payrolls. Unemployment rate, which usually goes one with another. Average work week, hourly earnings, initial gains, ADP. It's all a labor market. Okay. Inflation and housing, CPR, core CPI, PPR, core PPI. It uses a target level, deviation up or below target level. Housing starts building permits, new home sales, existing home sales. Standard & Poor's case Schiller, Schiller index, NAHB index, National Association of Home Builders. Okay. You can all found it on calendar. So, usually most important news release data, which can be found on all of these indices which I have been talking about today and which I have divided into these slides. Euro, minimum bid rate, ECB press conference, Zero economic sentiment, PMI, uh, government or governor of ECB speech, IFO business climate. It tends to have an immediate impact on euro basket. Dollar basket goes with all of these factors for labor market, ADC, which I have been explaining. GDP, unemployment claims, non-farm employment change, unemployment rate, preliminary University of Michigan consumer sentiment, core CPI, core retail sales, trade balance, Philly Fed index, FOMC meeting minutes, ADP. So dollar basket has the biggest impact okay, with these data releases. Okay? Not all of these are tradable, but some of those are tradable. We will talk about it in the second part of the webinar. I will teach you how to trade new spike by using these economic data. Okay? Pound. Claim and count change, NPC asset purchase facility votes, NPC official bank rate, unemployment rate, average earning index, services PMI, manufacturing production, and CPI. Pound is very good, okay? Pound is very good to trade. Okay, yes, PMI also, but the, the important thing is most of these red news, we call it red news, I usually use Forex Factory calendar. I don't say it's best, of course, I have it also on Admiral Markets and the Forex Street, but the thing is, I have been using it since the year of 2008, and it's, I have a knack to use that Forex Factory calendar. And, uh, but the, the principle is the same. Red color is heavy impact news, Orange color is usually medium impact news, and yellow news is basically non-impact news. Some calendars use exclamation marks, where three exclamation marks correspond to red. Okay, this is how Admiral Market calendars looks. It's basically the same, and very similar is is uh, Forex three. Yes, uh, the the question for dollar news: Can we trade pound dollar? Yes. I will show you later, okay, that now we are we are basically at the end of this first part of the webinar. So tune in, we will make a 15-minute break. Okay, we will make now a 15-minute break. And then we will start with how to trade these news, guys. How to trade these news. I will tell you that which news you can trade. And usually, I focus on GDP dollar. It's called spike trading, and some of these re releases are very spiky, so you can trade it and make some money independently of day trade. It's different dimension of trading. And also NFP trade, I will show you how I traded NFP. 
K it's basically NFP. It's, everything is uh, pure price action trading, no indicators used. Okay. So guys, these are okay. This is basically uh, most important fundamental news and analysis concept. And everything which I have been talking with you today is important for you to know. Okay. It's important for you to know. So I have tried to put this, you know, there are many books when you study, when you're studying economics, you need to read a lot of books, which basically tells you these, these are most important things. Now, obviously, we can talk about this for more hours, but because we need to need, we need to know the core of these economical factors. And this is the core of all of these economical factors and fundamental approaches. Okay? By watching these things, all of these th important economical things, which I can be talk talking about, you can estimate yourself either the next spike or predominant trend. So guys, thank you for listening. Now we will make a 15 minute break. Okay, 15 minute break. And then we will start with monthly webinar part two, how to trade these economical factors. Thank you for listening this webinar, I hope, and I think will be uploaded. Okay. And if you're not sure about fundamental analysis and news concept, re-listen this webinar again and I'm sure it will help you okay so thanks again and talk to you in 15 minutes